Hello all, and welcome to this Friday afternoon's review, which I am dubbing the Work Just Don't Stop Leaving Me Alone. I, I actually have to go and research a case because um, I'm under hearing right now for, for reasons I can't fathom because there was no harm, no foul. So, like, yes, I was insubordinate because I didn't, I refused to do something that my boss was incorrect about. And it was proven incorrect because a higher authority said there's nothing actionable, you know, for me or anyone else in our department to do. So I'm not sure why I'm having a hearing for insubordination for refusing to do a task that didn't need to be done. Any wonder? why I am so, so absolutely over my job and I hate being there every single moment of every single day. Except for when I'm looking at chickens or, you know, hanging out with my janitor friends. Okay, so this review is thanks to Randall, um, my father and I's friend, who donated, as I said in a previous review, many bottles of whiskey for me to review. Now this is Old Tub from the Jim Beam Corporation. And this is bottled in bond, so 100 proof or 50% ABV. And this is Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, of course. Let me just go and read the verbiage here. Unfiltered for more robust flavor. Before Jim Beam Bourbon, the Beam family made Old Tub, an unfiltered, bonded bourbon. Old Tub was the foundation for what would become the world's number one bourbon. This limited edition bottle is a tribute to that groundbreaking whiskey. Old Tub, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Jim Beam's Old Tub is a bottled and bond Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, just like the original old tub. It has not been carbon or chill filtered, only quality screened to remove bits of barrel wood. It is the next best thing to thieving the barrel yourself. You may notice some haziness when you add ice. Think of it as an indicator of the true full flavor of this bourbon. So it's, it's basically the, you know, Jim Beam juice, the original Jim Beam juice that is higher proof because bottle and bond means that it's got to be 50% ABV and has been unfiltered. Unlike many of the mass market bourbons out there, which are chill filtered. And Tennessee whiskeys are chill filtered by definition. Uh, those are sort of related to bourbon whiskeys. So, without much further ado, let's get to this. I'm kind of hungry, so this is probably going to go straight to my head. But that's fine. So. A nice amber-orange color. Maybe some hints of brown to it. Very thick legging, honestly. Kind of see. Mm. There's one thing you always find with Jim Beam made, you know, um, bourbon whiskeys, is they always have like this kind of peanut scent and taste aspect to them. It's something I find very, very, uh, very, very, I like the taste note and the scent note. But one thing that's really interesting to me is how well it, you know, some people like Jack and Coke or Jim and Coke. I prefer Jim Beam with Dr. Pepper. For some reason, just the flavor profiles of those two things mixed together just come together so wonderfully. But I'm digressing here. So again, peanut slash peanut brittle kind of scent note there. A little bit on the sweet side, uh, the nosing. Vanilla. Vanilla. 
some cinnamon spiciness, probably from the rye. I believe this is 15% um, on the rye bill, and of course 75% corn. But it definitely show, it shows the rye in its nose. Kind of a honeyed sweetness in the nose. And it smells a little hot. My, my nose burns a bit. But then there's also a very hot day outside, if you haven't noticed. Um, 85 degrees and no wind with high humidity. So, yeah. Yeah. So, not super complex on the nose, but that's fine. Let's get on to the palate now, shall we? Okay, so there's big taste here, but there's also big hotness. There's quite a bit of alcohol heat here. You can feel it going down. This, to be expected to a, li a little bit, it is 100 proof, 50% ABV. Up front, a bit of corn-like sweetness, and an immediate sort of pepperiness. Red pepperiness. It's on the tongue there, the tip of the tongue. And it kind of mixes with the alcohol heat. Top note. Almost like a cinnamon note in the top note there. I have a feeling that this is something that changes significantly in its taste profile when it's chilled. That nutty peanut aspect and wood shows up on the palate and through into the finish, but it's not a very aromatic note. It's mostly on the tongue. The initial sweetness gives way to a oaky dryness in the finish. And that sort of peppery note remains on the tongue, along with a bit of alcohol burn, honestly. The taste notes are pretty bold, though. I'm not getting it right now, but I did it on my pre-tasting, which, well, actually, I did about two or three pre-tastings already of this. I'm not getting it now because, probably because it's extraordinarily hot, but when it was cooler, when I drank this at night on a cooler day, I definitely got tobacco-like notes, um, in particular, Perique tobacco, Perique, Virginia Perique tobacco-like notes, and that's a pipe blend. I don't go, like I've mentioned before, I don't mix my tobacco 
um, habit with my alcohol habit, mostly because I don't find them complimentary. I know many people do, and I kind of wish it did for me, but for some reason, when I try to do both at the same time, I just feel like it lessens um, both rather than um, complements each other. And that's just me. But going back to this, in previous tastings, perhaps when it was a little bit cooler weather-wise and temperature-wise for it, there was in the midst a very interesting Virginia Perique tobacco note. Uh, yeah, there's also a pretty strong vanilla note in the front to mids as well. So would I, would I classify this as rough? Untamed, I say, is probably a better word. Untamed is good for something that's... An, untamed is a good adjective to describe something that's unfiltered. No. And... Yeah. I actually do like this one. I guess because I don't really find any particular flaws with it. It's not super complex. It's not introducing very many interesting notes. But it has those basic Jim Beam notes that I find enjoyable. I often wonder what it is about the Jim Beam process that basically all the bourbon whiskeys they put out kind of have that peanut slash peanut brittle note to it. Now, I haven't seen this for sale in Hawaii, so I don't know if it's distributed here. But looking online, this seems to be pretty reasonably priced at, you know, between $20 and $25. Probably around $27 to $30 here in Hawaii. But, yeah. Old tub. Definitely is... A bit on the rough, it has rough edges in regards to the alcohol heat. But besides that, there's a lot of big, bold, traditional bourbon whiskey flavors um, of a bourbon whiskey that leans more towards um, the lean. It, it expresses more of the rye notes than the corn notes, I should say, of the mash bill. And... Yeah, yeah, um, a good bargain, um, and probably, I would say, you know, I'm, I'm drinking it straight, but generally it's very rare that I review whiskeys, um, with anything other than a dash of water for scotch whiskeys, um, but I do believe that this would make for a great mixer, as well as probably better on the rocks than straight. And that, folks, is your whiskey review for this Friday afternoon. Thanks again to Randall for donating this bottle for review. Um, this is one that uh, I've quite enjoyed, honestly. Um, goes to show you not everything that is enjoyable is complex or expensive at times. You know, sometimes it just has to hit that quintessential note right there. You know what I mean? And that is it for this afternoon, folks. Cheers.